Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about chapter five of A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. And as always, let's open up with a passage. I'm not sure. I guess so. There was a lot of weird gunk in there. I know it won't hurt me. I know it's going to be filtered out, but something, I don't know. Moscap smiled. Some part of you doesn't like it. Right. The metal smile grew wider. A remnant, an evolutionary remnant trying to keep you from getting sick. Dex scratched the back of their neck. Hmm. Remnants are powerful things, hard to ignore, but you have the sense and the tools to avoid getting sick from that water, and I, Moscap traced a finger along the vat, making flakes of rust fall like snow, I know that the world I'm headed to is not the world the originals walked away from. In chapter 5 of Psalm for the Wild Built, Dex's wagon's water tank springs a leak, and so Moscap suggests that it take the water tank down to the nearby river to fill it up. Dex is initially wary of this, thinking back to remnants of chidings and warnings from various figures in their life who told them to stay on trails. Moscap argues that an individual off the trail may do damage, but some damage is expected within an ecosystem. Dex is also wary of Moscap carrying the water tank to the river, as Dex feels that the action would cause Moscap to somehow be repeating the actions done by robots and factories long ago. Moscap argues that they're doing it out of their own initiative, and that Dex should respect its agency. After they get to the river, Moscap takes Dex further on to see an old bottling factory. In this factory, Dex learns that Moscap is wild-built. This means that they're made up of parts used by other robots. While robots could in theory repair their parts indefinitely and be immortal, long ago they chose to let themselves die and be made in a way not dissimilar from organic life. Their argument is that to study the natural cycle, they need to be a part of the natural cycle. The reason Moscap decided to take Dex to the factory was that Dex was wary of getting water from the river because of the kind of sludge that we uh, read about in the opening passage. Moscap argues that this is a remnant to help humans avoid drinking bad water, no different than how the robots have remnants of the past and have remnants of being wary of factories. Now, this chapter looks primarily at agency and how certain processes are acquired for the natural cycle. While things like fear and hunger and pain are useful to keep creatures engaging in the natural process, this type of thinking may not always be the best for the ecosystem as a whole. In this chapter, we're provided with the example of elks overgrazing after predators have been removed. And although the elks were finally free to eat as much as they wanted, and were safe and happy, the overgrazing ultimately led to the decimation of the ecosystem they relied upon. Moscap also argues that one of the differences between humans and elks is that humans are able to overcome their remnants or other natural fears, anxieties, and pain. Moscap argues that they are smarter than their remnants. Again, the remnants being these kind of evolutionary markers or things from the past um, that are largely kind of instinctual, right? Again, this book's really looking at kind of how ecology um, and biology and things like that really kind of affect people in ways that they may not be aware of, and the fact um, it's also looking at kind of their assumptions about these things. So one of the big questions of the story is, what is Moscap implying when it says that humans are smarter than their remnants? Provide real-world examples if possible. As always, cite the text and any other sources to support your answer. Uh, with that said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in chapter six.